France, Germany, and Belgium. Once it was open borders. Now it's machine guns, checkpoints, more guards, harder questions. Welcome to the new Europe, thanks to this. The rituals are now well-worn, memorials, moments of silence. But on the faces of EU leaders, this may be more than just grief. With tighter borders, many openly fear a cornerstone of European unity is crumbling. It's not broken yet, but if some member states persist on following a national policy, it might put one day the European project at stake. The common borders policy is really quite important because it did give people a sense of being in the same if you will, common space. It's breaking down all over the place and everybody is saying it's temporary, but temporary has a way of becoming permanent if nobody pushes back. Don Murray is now a freelance journalist in France, but as foreign correspondent for the CBC... Don Murray, CBC News, London. Don Murray, CBC News, Aberdeen. Don Murray, CBC News, Klagenfurt. He covered Europe back when it was moving toward ever closer union. The European Union was born from a shattering a uh, series of events, uh, the Second World War, the Holocaust, uh, the defeat of Hitler, the destruction of Germany. The European Union saw itself as growing, becoming stronger. There was a push for uh, a common currency, for a common political union. All of that seemed to be uh, much more the, the wave of the future. The idea that it could be knocked off stride by uh, terrorist bombs of any description seemed to be a sideshow. Um, that's changed now. Over the course of a year, more than a million refugees have fled into Europe. After the Brussels bombing, refugees knew exactly where the blame would fall. What's happened today in Belgium, it's so bad for us, especially for maybe they will be more afraid of us. They will make things harder for people here. And they were right. From Italy to Hungary to the UK, the political backlash was swift. I think the arrival in Europe of millions of people, many of whom we know absolutely nothing about, is clearly a threat to security in Europe. But the attacks didn't come from refugees. The irony, of course, is that almost all of the perpetrators in France and Belgium are not refugees and migrants. They're homegrown. They were born in their countries. And this is, this is overlooked by the people who say we have to shut the borders. Yet, parties focused on borders and with leaving the EU are winning support. The most popular politician in the Netherlands, Geert Wilders. Um, um, people are fed up. They are not bigots or extremists or racist or crazy people. They are concerned people. Surging in France, Marine Le Pen. La politique des Français, pour les Français, avec les Français. With the refugee and migrant crisis, you know, this is a party that's now getting up to 30% of the vote in elections. It's the same effect across many countries in Europe. There is only one notable, and it's a huge exception, and that's Germany. But Germany's Angela Merkel is under fire for accepting vast numbers of refugees. A far-right rival is rising fast. Con 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 controlling our borders is the thing to do in the first place. And I thank you for your support. Thank you. In Britain, a referendum on whether to leave the EU is just three months away. We do have a fifth column that is living within our own countries that is utterly opposed to our values. Amid concerns over immigration and terrorism, the polls have narrowed. Now you have the British saying, maybe we'll just pull out. And once that happens, uh, uh, not by itself, but if, with, with the euro still being a problem with the refugee situation, Brexit, as they call it, uh, could be uh, well nigh a death blow to uh, the European Union. Just a year ago, it seemed like a debt crisis could blow Europe apart. Added to that risk now, desperation and violence with no end in sight.